The lifestyle of the young, doomed romantic poet was one that was ideally suited for me and the times I was living in, hounded as I was by the army, who wanted to pack me off to Vietnam as a killing machine. That was the original appeal of the romantic poets for me. But when I started writing my own poetry, I came to realize the importance of their creative gifts and appreciate the brilliance of their poetry, the depth of feeling and insight about the human condition and how difficult it is to do what they did with words. Not much attention is paid today to their style of form and craft because it's very difficult to do. It's like the style of Beethoven versus jazz or rap. But like Beethoven, who lived during the same romantic time period, they are immortal poets whose words live on and still have the power today to touch the hearts and souls of people all around the globe. At the foot of the Spanish steps, next to the Bernini Fountain, is the famous Keats Shelley House, where Keats spent his last days. Some say that Keats was inspired to write his famous ode on a Grecian urn after seeing the Elgin marbles in the British Museum. Uh, others maintain it was the Townley vase that inspired his poetic imagination. But you know, neither of these objects, as rich as they are, contain the, the wonderful detail that exists within the poem. In it, Keats describes uh, a pagan ritual sacrifice in a small antique village on the side of a, of a Grecian vase, where the town is emptied out of its folk, and they are all marching with uh, drums and timbrels and wild ecstasy towards some uh, pagan sacrifice. Uh, a, a lover tries to kiss a beautiful maiden, but she is loath to accept his advances. She will never be his, but she will always remain beautiful and desirable. Keats seems to say that art trumps reality by being forever new forever young, forever unchanging. Ode on a Grecian urn. Thou still unravished bride of quietness. Thou foster child of silence and slow time, sylvan historian, who canst thus express a flowery tale more sweetly than our rhyme. What leaf-fringed legend haunts about thy shape of deities or mortals or of both in Tempe or the dales of Arcady? What men or gods are these? What maidens loathe? What mad pursuit? What struggle to escape? What pipes and trembles? What wild ecstasy? Heard melodies are sweet, but those unheard are sweeter. Therefore, ye soft pipes, Play on, not to the sensual ear, but more endeared, pipe to the spirit, ditties of no tone. Fair youth beneath the trees, thou canst not leave thy song, nor ever can those trees be bare. Bold lover, never, never canst thou kiss, though winning near the goal, yet do not grieve. She cannot fade. Though thou hast not thy bliss, forever wilt thou love, and she be fair. Ah, oh, happy, happy boughs that cannot shed your leaves nor ever bid the spring adieu, and happy melodists unwearied, forever piping songs, forever new. More happy love, more happy, happy love, forever warm and still to be enjoyed, forever panting and forever young all breathing human passion far above that leaves a heart high sorrowful and cloyed, a burning forehead and a parching tongue. Who are these coming to the sacrifice? To what green altar, O oh, mysterious priest, leadest thou that heifer lowing at the skies and all her silken flanks with garlands dressed? 
What little town by river or seashore or mountain built with peaceful citadel is emptied of its folk this pious morn? And little town, thy streets forevermore will silent be, and not a soul to tell why thou art desolate can e'er return. Oh, attic shape, fair attitude with breed of marble men and maidens overwrought with forest branches and trodden weed, thou silent form dost tease us out of thought as doth eternity, cold pastoral. When old age shall this generation waste, thou shalt remain in midst of other woe than ours, a friend to man, to whom thou sayest, beauty is truth, truth, beauty. That is all ye know on earth, and all ye need to know. Keats's words were not writ on water, nor were Shelley's. They continue to live on as bright stars in the poetic firmament, shining forth as beacons of hope for humanity, for truth, for beauty. <laughs>